Now, next one. So this person asked this question. Now, let us turn to Ephesians 4.30. Ephesians 4.30. Ephesians 4.30. All right. Now, um, Ephesians 4.30. Can we read um, together? One, two, reading. Okay, so now the person asks, there is this word, grief, not the Holy Spirit. All right, grief, not the Holy Spirit. Oh, by the way, I wanted to say just now as well. Um, so Jesus Christ, the Spirit in Jesus Christ is not the Holy Spirit. All right, so don't say Jesus Christ took on man and then the Spirit in him was the Holy Spirit. It is not. It is, Jesus is separate entity in the Godhead from the Holy Spirit, all right? So now, so put a finger there. So this person said, well, there is grief, the Holy Spirit. All right, put a finger there. Now turn to First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. Okay, one, two, reading. Four. God hath not appointed us to wrath. Oh, sorry, verse 19. I'm, my apologies. Verse 19. Reading. Quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. So this young person asks, now, is, what's the difference between grieving the spirit and quenching the spirit? What's the difference? What is the difference? And I guess we must learn the spiritual lesson as well. Now, to grieve, to grieve, it means this, when we say we grieve God. Now, it means to cause sorrow, to cause sorrow. But more importantly, when it comes to God, it is to offend, offend, all right? So we often think grief simply means cause sorrow, cause sadness, but it also means to, to upset, to offend, all right? So, for example, a parent say, uh, give instruction to the child and the child constantly disobeys, the parent said, I'm so grieved. Do you think the parent is only feeling sadness and sorrow? No, he's, he's feeling upset. There's anger as well. All right? So he's grieved. So when God says, grieve not the Holy Spirit, he's saying, do not take the Holy Spirit lightly. Don't grieve him. Don't offend him. Don't cause sorrow to his heart. Sorrow meaning to say, you know, he is trying to help you or have given you instruction through his word. And then you, on purpose, go against those instructions. All right? You cause him to be upset. He's trying to help you walk a godly life. And you bring him sorrow when he see how you sin against God who died for you. All right? So... Now, that is the, the, the meaning of that. Now, but I want you to take note, all right? Turn back to Ephesians 4.30. Now, these are the things, for example, that grieves God, Right? Now, one of the very immediate contexts is verse 28 and 29, stealing and look at verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Corrupt communication is something that grieves the Holy Spirit. We learned what is corrupt, right? Corrupt doesn't necessarily, corrupt and ungodly doesn't, especially ungodly doesn't necessarily mean it's very evil, very wicked, very, very, very filthy. Now, anything that corrupts the Christian principles, God say, when they proceed out of our, our mouth, instead, and we don't edify others, 
it grieves God. The Christian's conversation, the Christian speech grieves God very often. We spend much time learning about this topic. Don't speak things without thinking. Um, just like you're careful not to say things to offend people, we should be very careful um, to say certain things. Right? So sometimes just because the world uses this phrase, the world says all the time, then we just say it. Then, or the world tells this joke, then we just joke as well. It grieves God. It grieves God. All right? So think about that. So one of the lessons to, to learn about this is must know. Teens, when you're in school, young adults, when you're at workplace, families at home, can you grieve the Holy Spirit? Very easily. Very easily. He's patient, but doesn't mean he doesn't get offended. Okay? So learn that. Now, next one. Then what about quench? What is quench? Now, quench is, well, of course, we know to extinguish, right? Extinguish means put out or to suppress, suppress. So quench is to suppress something, all right? To push something down, to stifle, all right? To reduce, to, to dampen, okay? So this is the, these are the common um, words that you can use to replace that. So quench is to 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 suppress. God says don't suppress the Spirit of God. Now, what does it mean? Now, if you turn to 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Okay. Now, there are a range of things from verse 16 to 22 that God talks about. A range of things. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. Rejoice evermore. Now, when, when, we, when God works something in our life, now God says be, be rejoicing. When God says now pray, so there's a need to pray, to give thanks. Then he says quench not the Holy Spirit. Now, God works in you. God can work in you. And God drives you to do certain things. All right? Instead, now, so God will work in you in difficult situations to rejoice, but you can suppress Him. You choose to murmur, complain, and be very angry at things that happen that God allows in your life. But God was working in you. you how do you suppress? God, how, do, God, how does God work? The Holy Spirit will use messages, will use your quiet time, and He will teach you certain things. But instead of rejoicing, you get upset. God, why do you let this happen? And God says, pray without ceasing. So God sometimes, at certain seasons, now God moves you. Well, through messages, God says, now you must pray, with, pray without ceasing. You must have set time of prayer. You learn the lesson. And then sometimes you realize, I need to pray now. Or you have something, I should pray. But instead, you can suppress. You can suppress. Now, many other areas uh, can be included. God, when God works in your life, you can suppress. That's why we said, right? Salvation, the deliverance from penalty of sin is irresistible. You cannot suppress that. Thank God for that. But after salvation, God uses what you can quench the Holy Ghost. It's resistible. We learn that. Sometimes you know God is moving you away from certain sin. Now, suppress literally means you say, God, leave me alone. Leave me alone. You suppress his voice in your head. Leave me alone. Right, children? Sometimes daddy and mommy say, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. In your mind, you're saying, leave me alone. Quench the spirit is God. Just shut up. I don't want to hear it. Shut up. It can be adults as well. God keeps bringing something to tell you, you quench. You keep dampening his spirit trying to extinguish that from your thought and your heart. Your conscience is worked upon by the Holy Spirit. All right? So, now, so there are these differences. 
One is offend, make God sorrowful because you love him. You do not want to do that. The other one is, is you can tell God, God, leave me alone. Shut up. Just leave me alone in this matter. I don't want to hear anymore. All right, so that is what it means. Now, what are some of the lessons that we should learn? Now, God can leave you alone. God can withdraw his presence and leave you alone. When you keep um, grieving and keep quenching. Like God says, Ichabod, I will remove my presence from Israel. Now, if you're a true believer, you, you will not lose your salvation. But God says, all right, you keep grieving me, you keep resisting my Holy Spirit working, showing you and ask, telling you to obey, I will withdraw my influence over you. Let you make your choices, let you continue in your sin, because sin will always, always have consequences. The working of the Holy Spirit, young ones know this. When you get convicted, when you want to play certain things, you want to watch certain things, you want to see certain things, you want to tell, you want to, you want to do certain things, and you know it's sinful, you must know it is not you alone. The Holy Spirit is working. You can quench Him, you can suppress Him. Leave me alone. I, I want to continue to watch manga, manhua, and manhua. I want to continue in that. Leave me alone. All right? Now, after some time, say, God will say, okay, I'll leave you alone. Then you will become addicted. Then, then you will fall into sin for the adults as well. You want to do something at work. The Holy Spirit is working. You get reminders from messages. And never mind, just go ahead. The consequences will eventually happen. Don't, don't let God reach that stage with your life in my life all right instead be very sensitive very careful very obedient very very watchful of the prompting of the spirit all right so i hope that you learn the difference and know that it is serious it is not a small thing he is god what do we have here top five reasons why church dropouts uh, what church dropouts say why they stop attending church now, please remember 66% of, well, I take the American view, um, they are the most readily available results. They stop attending church at least a year after turning 18. So from